Hey y'all, happy Thursday, 5th and 7th hour, happy Friday, 6th and 8th hour. Um, you guys might notice that today's lesson is going to be pretty similar to our last one. So objectives wise, we are identifying nouns and pronouns instead of verbs. We'll kind of build on what we learned in our last lesson with parts of speech. And then our second objective today is to write complete sentences. Um, now that we know verbs and now that we're adding nouns and pronouns, we'll know how to use subjects and objects in sentences. That's all we need to know to write complete sentences. Um, so I do want to kind of see your sentence writing ability at the end of this lesson as well. Let's pray and then we'll get right into nouns and pronouns um, that we'll get to practice together today as well. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, just the opportunity um, to continue teaching even while we're stuck virtual for a little bit. Um, we want to pray, God, that you are um, helping us all to tune in. We, we pray that you are um, blessing the technology, that it doesn't mess up on us. And we want to pray for just safety for our community, that you are watching over our school, watching over um, our families, our homes, our communities too. May you continue to show how good you are in the midst of a really trying time. Jesus, we love you, and we ask for your blessings today. We ask that as we um, learn a little bit about English, we also um, learn a little bit more about the calling that you have for us for our futures too. We love you, Jesus. We pray this all in your name. Amen. So nouns and pronouns, notes and practice is going to be structured pretty much the same as verbs was. If I click nouns and pronouns notes, you guys are watching the video now and you have your PowerPoint presentation here. I'll open it in the actual PowerPoint so it's easier to see. Below the video is my PowerPoint. That's this one right here, as well as a copy of the notes packet we have here. If you were one of the lucky ones to, to be in class earlier this week, you should have this uh, or a paper copy of these notes that you can fill in as we go. For the rest of you, you would get that in person next week once we're back in the classroom. Conversely, you can choose to take notes in your own notebook. Um, I'm, I'm not going to collect these note packets, so to speak, but it is a good idea to take those notes as you go so that you have a resource that you can use at any point in our writing unit and beyond that. Today we're going to look at nouns. Let me open up my PowerPoint here. All right, sorry for the wait there. I wanted to make sure I could pull up uh, my PowerPoint exactly like I wanted it. I wanted to start on this slide as a little recap of what we last covered, action verbs and linking verbs. Um, as a reminder, action verbs, 99% of the verbs in our language are action verbs, words like run and punch and kick and hug, or ones that are mental actions like say, see, uh, speak. It's really any sort of action that uh, the subject of the sentence does is an action verb. Linking verbs, there are there's probably about 30 to 40 of them in our entire language. But the ones I want you to memorize are the forms of to be. Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, and been are verbs, even though they may not seem like they're verbs. The other critical part of a sentence is a subject. So we see this, we see this underlined right here. Again, as you're filling out your notes, feel free to fill in blanks as you go or take your own notes as we go through this uh, video. Feel free to pause at any point um, if I'm going a little bit too fast for writing. The other part of a, of a sentence that we need is a subject. Subjects are the things that verb in a sentence. Nouns, or I should say subjects can be nouns or pronouns. So we'll start with nouns today. So a noun is a person, place, thing, or idea. Notice that idea is underlined there. Um, I believe that's what goes in the blank on your notes. In sentence writing, nouns are used as subjects or the things that do the verbing in a sentence. They can also be used as objects. They, they either get verbed or they add necessary details later on in the sentence. Generally, subjects come before the verb and objects come after, although there are a few exceptions to that, to that rule. For example, the magician hid a card behind his back. There are three nouns in this sentence. Magician is a person, card is a, is a thing, and his back is a body part, another thing, right? These blanks are for expressing what they do in this sentence, right? Magician is a subject. He is the one doing the verbing. He's the one doing the hiding. The card is what we would call a direct object. The card is the thing getting hidden in this sentence. Back here is what's called an object of the preposition. Um, we'll talk more about that when we get to prepositional phrases in a couple of weeks here. But back here is adding necessary detail to that sentence. It's telling us where he's hiding the card. To make a noun plural, um, we do need to add S or ES to the end of it. There are lots of exceptions to this rule. So singular would be if we have one of a noun, plural would be more than one. So like for instance, the, the noun dog is singular, one dog. 
40 dogs. Notice that we add that S right there to make it plural. As for exceptions, you can think of some of those words. Words like sheep. Sheep does not have a plural. It's one sheep or 40 sheep. Um, the word goose changes to geese, so there are some plurals that um, change vowels instead of adding S. Um, woman changes to women. Child changes to children. And the, the exceptions go on and on. But just know that this is just a general rule right here. Common nouns and proper nouns. Common nouns are general. They do not need to be capitalized. Words like school would be would be uh, left lowercase. Proper nouns need to be capitalized because they are specific people, places, things, or ideas. So if school is, co is a common noun, Milwaukee Lutheran High School is a proper noun. Capital M, capital L, capital H, capital S. We know how those rules work. We see some examples right here, and I think there's a big section in the notes uh, for us to look at here. I'll try to pull that up on my computer screen too. Notice that on these examples, we have a common noun, it's plural, and then a proper noun as well. So girl is a common noun, it's a person. Girls would be its plural, note that it adds an S, but then we get to a proper noun, a specific girl, Mariana. Notice that a person could also be like a type of person, like a profession, police. Might be a singular noun. Policemen, notice right there, it's an irregular plural, no, not an S ending, but an M-E-N ending. Specific policeman, a proper noun might be Inspector Jenkins. Notice that it's capital I for his title, and then also capital J for, I should say, his or her title, his or her last name. So you'll see this in your notes as well. So in your notes, you'll see some blanks that can be filled in, just with some specific ideas. For house, for a house is a place, a building can be a place, or a park can be a place, something small like that. Plural for house is houses. Notice that S ending. The White House might be a proper, a proper name for a house or a building. Try this with country. So country is a singular common noun. Countries, notice the IES ending. Uh, that, that plural does change things a little bit. Typically nouns ending in Y take an IES ending on their plurals. Think, think for yourself, what might be a good proper noun that fits in this blank right here? I hope you chose another country. And if you chose the United States of America, U.S. and A would all be capitalized. You can choose any country you like. Germany, Japan, Malawi, Tanzania, Kenya, Spain, Italy. Uh, what's another one? Brazil, uh, Uruguay, Paraguay, whatever. Canada, Mexico, whatever you chose right there. Notice that it would be capitalized because it is a proper noun. What about a thing? Now notice, I left out the singular right here. Our plural is tissues, and our proper noun is Kleenex. It's a brand name. I hope you know that what goes in that blank is tissue, singular, T-I-S-S-U-E. Let's try this with medicine. So medicine, notice, is singular, and, and uh, lowercase because it's common. Medicines would be its plural. Think for yourself, what might be a good proper noun for a medicine name to pop right in here? And for here, I would just choose, once again, a specific brand name. It would be Tylenol, capital T, Robitussin, capital R, um, NyQuil, capital N, Sudafed, capital S, whatever you choose, or uh, Allegra, capital A, whatever specific medicine you chose, notice that it would be capitalized because it is a specific brand name. And then there are ideas. Now, ideas are the tricky, probably the trickiest of the four types of nouns because ideas are things that we cannot detect with our senses, like we talked about with symbolism. Words like philosophy is an idea. A philosophy is just a way of thinking. Its plural would be philosophies, I-E-S, instead of Y ending. A proper noun for a philosophy might be idealism. A lot of uh, words ending in I-S-M are specific philosophies, idealism, narcissism, those kinds of things, and they do get capitalized because they are specific philosophies. Try it with religion. So religion is a singular common noun. Religions, with an S, is its plural. What might be a specific proper religion? You can pop in that line. So for that one, you can if you use Christianity, capital C, Buddhism, capital B, Hinduism, capital H, Islam, capital I, whatever uh, world religion you chose right there would be capitalized. I hope, I hope that as you worked through these, you get an idea what counts as a noun. People, places, things, ideas. It is time to practice nouns before we move on to pronouns as well. So let's take a moment and go into our notes packet and look at um, the nouns in those example sentences from our last lesson. And I can click view.
and let's scroll here a bit. So you've worked through nouns. That's where you popped in your blanks just a moment ago. This is our nouns and verbs practice from the other day. So, so far we've underlined and identified the verbs in each sentence. War, were, charged, was, eat, is, hacked, and are. Now it's time to do the noun step. In each of the sentences below, circle all nouns and label them as subjects or objects. Subjects are the things that do the verbing in the sentence. Objects and the things that get verbed. I want you to try this one on your own. I'll just show all eight of these up on screen. Try these on your own first, and then I'll go over what, what we find. All right, welcome back. Again, if you haven't finished these, feel free to pause before I go through these. Let's discuss. The salty sailor wore a silly hat. There are two nouns in that sentence. Sailor is a person, and hat is a thing. You can circle both. In this sentence, our subject is sailor, because the sailor is the one doing the wearing. Hat would be an object. The hat is the thing getting worn. As a reminder, the English language is what we call an SVO language. In a normal sentence, the subject comes first, sailor. Verb comes second, wore. Object comes last, hat. The sailor wore the hat. The dog ate the cookie. Um, Jamal kicked the ball. Whatever it might be, notice that it's subject, verb, object. Number two, the bored fishermen were lazy on their boats. Um, fishermen, I hope you notice, is our subject in this sentence. Subjects come first. Lazy is an adjective, so we'll talk about that more in our next lesson, or in two lessons from now, sorry. I hope you notice that boats is an object here. Specifically, it's an object of the preposition. We'll talk more about that in a few weeks. So it's fishermen, S, boats, O. The rhinoceros charged our jeep. Rhinoceros, you can circle and label as your subject. Jeep, you can uh, label as your object in this sentence. The jeep is the thing that's getting charged. The rhinoceros is doing the charging. That bartender was scary looking. There's only one noun in this sentence because scary looking is an adjective. Bartender is our subject in this sentence. As a reminder, every sentence has to have at least a subject. So if all you have is one noun in the sentence or one pronoun, we'll get to pronouns in a moment, it has to be your subject. Stereotypically, police officers eat donuts. Don't get fooled by stereotypically. It's an adverb. We'll talk about that more in a couple lessons as well. Our, uh, our uh, subject is police officers or just officers, if you wanted to just use one word here. Donuts is an object for the things getting eaten in this sentence. Lisa Marie is an adorable little girl. Lisa Marie is our subject. Circle her. Girl is a noun, so you can circle that. If you labeled girl as an object, that's fine for now. Specifically, it's a predicate noun, but you'll learn more about that in your English 1 class. The sneaky student hacked the FBI. Student gets circled. That's your subject. The FBI is your object in this sentence. And number eight, these young teachers are crazy. There's only one noun in this sentence. Teachers is a subject. A lot of these nouns were people, and that's totally fine. There was an animal in there with rhinoceros as well. But notice how things and ideas get circled as well. Let's cover pronouns while we're at it. This video might end up being a little bit longer, but that's okay. I'm giving the weekend uh, to complete today's assignment. So let's just work through pronouns while we're at it. As you continue in your notes here, it's good to learn nouns and pronouns at the same time. Next up, pronouns are words that take the place of nouns. So let's say we, we have the following sentence here. We have Tommy took Tommy's car out of Tommy's driveway for a joyride. If we didn't have pronouns in our language, our sentences would look something like this. Where we have the same noun, Tommy, without any way to take the place of that noun, Tommy, we find ourselves repeating it too much. Tommy took Tommy's car out of Tommy's driveway for a joyride. As you rephrase the sentence, I hope you notice we can use the pronoun his. Tommy took his car out of his driveway for a joyride. His is a possessive pronoun, and we use it to replace Tommy's wherever we need it, right? This allows us to keep our writing fresh and interesting. Otherwise, we'd be repeating ourselves a ton when it comes to nouns. So just remember, pronouns are words that take the place of nouns. They are a rather different part of speech from what we've covered so far. There are lots and lots and lots of verbs and lots and lots and lots of nouns in our language. There's a set number of pronouns in our language because they're just there to take the place of nouns so that we don't get too repetitive. Let's take a look at how they work. Maybe. There you go. So notice that in this chart, the way pronouns are divided is in multiple ways. First of all, there is the um, singular or plural along with person, so point of view. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then they're also split up by subject, object, 
and possessive right there. So notice the first person singular is I, just like first person point of view. Notice that pronouns change from subject to object. I ate the cookie. The cookie ate me instead of the cookie ate I. So I changes to me in the, uh, in the objective. So as a subject, it's I. As the object, it's me. Along with that, we have the, the possessives as well. We'll talk about possession more uh, later on in, I think, next semester, actually. Notice possessive adjective is my. My cookie is delicious. Possessive pronoun, that cookie is mine. Reflexive pronoun, I gave myself a cookie. I'm thinking about cookies this morning, apparently. Notice that in the plural, I changes to we. So there's more than, more than one in our group right here. In the object, we changes to us. The possessive adjective is our, possessive pronoun ours, and then ourselves. The reflexives are just the form of self. We go to second person. Second person is you. You never changes from subject to object, which is nice. And then we just have your, yours, and yourself. Same thing in the plural, although yourself changes to yourselves to make it plural. The third person is, is maybe the most difficult because it splits up by gender. Uh, feminine third person is she, so it's she. Her in the in the object pronoun. I'll keep talking about cookies. She baked cookies. We baked cookies for her. Same thing in the possessive. Her, hers, and herself. Masculine is he and him instead of she and her. The possessive is his, both uh, adjective and pronoun. Reflexive is himself instead of herself. And then the third person singular uh, for a thing, so no gender, would be it. It is just like you. It doesn't change from subject to object. It's possessive is it's. There is no possessive pronoun. It's the same as a possessive possessive adjective here. Itself is a reflexive. Third person plural is they. So notice the difference between we and they. If it's we, you're in the group. If it's they, you're outside of the group. Uh, object pronoun is them, their, theirs, and themselves. I don't expect you to memorize this chart, but you do have it as a resource for you in your notes. Use this whenever you are looking for the right pronoun to use in your writing. There is another set of pronouns called the indefinite pronouns. Again, do not memorize all of these. The most common ones are the forms of one, body, and thing. The most important thing you should know with those right now is that they're always singular. We're going to practice agreement with them in another month and a half year or something like that. But you should know that the forms of one, body, and thing are pronouns. They're indefinites. So things like anybody, anyone, anything, everybody, everyone, everything, no one, nobody, nothing, somebody, someone, something, those are indefinite pronouns. There are a few that are always plural, things like both, few, many, and others. There is a small set that can be either singular or plural. We'll talk about that more once we get to agreement in about a month, month and a half here. Now it's time to practice. Once again, in your notes packet, rewrite each of the sentences using pronouns. I'm going to get there in mind, and we'll wrap up this video. All right, here we go. So I found the activity. It's right under our chart for singular, uh, or right under our chart for the indefinite pronouns. Let's look at some of these examples here. So we're given an example sentence that has an underlined word. We have Peter has a nice bicycle, and they're asking us to rewrite using pronouns. Feel free to rewrite these entire sentences as we practice, or just replace the underlined nouns with pronouns. I'll discuss these together. I'll discuss these for you in just a moment, too. Um, I do want to scroll. Can we see all of them? No, I think I'll show off five of them at a time. Or we'll do Patricia as an example right here. Then I'll show like four or five of them as, at a time as we move on. So we have Patricia has a beautiful cat. Same thing as what we saw with Peter has a nice bicycle. We just need to replace Patricia with, this, with the singular subject pronoun. If we need to access our list, it's there. But it's pretty easy to note that it's she. Patricia has a girl's name. She has a beautiful cat. Right now I'll show sentences two through six, so take a moment, see if you can do those on your own. Feel free to pause this video. I'll discuss what I would do in each of these in just a moment. All right, so Jimmy likes Catherine. Similar to what we saw with Patricia, where it was she has a beautiful cat. Now we're just looking at Catherine as an object. Jimmy's our subject of this sentence. The verb is likes. It's the thing that Jimmy is doing in this sentence. He's liking someone. The object here is Catherine. Object for a feminine pronoun is her. Jimmy likes her. Miss Johnson always explains the topics to the students. Notice that students is plural. It is an object as well. We need them here. Miss Johnson always explains the topics to them. 
I hope you're noticing that it sounds wrong to flip subjects and or, and uh, subjects and objects when it comes to pronouns. If I were to say Mrs. Miss Johnson always explains the topics to they, it sounds very strange. Notice that we need them here. Kevin knows how to fix your computer. Yeah, again, we have an object here later on in the sentence. Computer doesn't have a gender, so we're not going to call it him or her. We're going to call it it. Kevin knows how to fix it. And number five, Tom and John usually study in my house. Notice that Tom and John together are plural, so we can't use he. There's, there are two, two boys here. We have to use the plural they. They usually study in my house. Oh, and there's six as well. Oh, can I show the rest of them? I'll just show six through ten right here. Take a moment to, to answer these ones, and then I'll discuss them. Alrighty, once again, if you need to pause, feel free to wrap these up. Let's discuss. Maureen is going to play with Vivian, Charlotte, and me. Now, just like it was with the students earlier, we have a group, it's plural, but notice that me, I am in this group as well. Instead of them here, it's going to be us. Maureen is going to play with us. Nancy is studying with Marco. Marco is a boy's name. Nancy is studying with him. My friends and I play golf in Rito K every weekend. Same thing here, just like I was in the group with Vivian and Charlotte. Now I'm in a group with my friends. Instead of they play golf, it's now we play golf in Rito K because I'm inside of that group. Two more. The students are talking with Keith and Claudia. The students are talking with them. This one's really similar to Tom and John. It's just the difference between subject and object. Tom and John as a subject is they. They study. Keith and Claudia as an object becomes them, talking with them. And the last one, I only give special food to my dogs. Don't get tricked on this one. My dogs is just as plural as Keith and Claudia are. We use them. I only give special food to them. I hope you're finding this sort of replacement activity pretty simple. Um, we're going to do a little writing activity to wrap up our lesson, but it's not due until the end of the weekend. Now you get to practice using subjects, verbs, and objects in your own sentences.